Today I built the smallest 4x4 seamless glass door. It's 12 wide, 2 deep, and 20 tall. Let's watch it opening here. So that's the opening, it's just a quad extending. And the closing, the quad extends as well because it's button activated. Then a toggle fires, which runs the piston worm for the closing. If you want, just want to see, here's a version with the circuit's color coding. So cyan is the quad, the lime is the redstone block, double extenders on the side, and the orange is the closing. And of course, it also works. This door also has no note blocks or composters or any of the post 1.9 features if that's something you're into. There is one minecart here to get items from this hopper down to this one, but it's fairly easy to put in place. It doesn't require any difficult minecart clips. But there are um, two versions of the top for different locations just because this hopper dropper loop is somewhat finicky. Okay, I guess now we can go to the tutorial. Okay, so to start the tutorial, you're going to need a 12 wide, 2 deep, and 20 high space. And your floor level is going to be 8 blocks off the ground. And so we're going to start by building just a standard piston worm, which will push the glass blocks up to close the door. So you just want to find the middle. And two blocks on each side of the middle, you're going to have normal pistons with sticky pistons facing down into them. Then on top you'll have a row of quartz blocks, or whatever your door block is. Then four layers of glass. Then on top of that you're going to have another layer of your door block, which will be the floor level. We just continue making our door frame around this. Just like that. On top of that you're going to have your quadruple extender, so four pistons facing down on top, like that. Then two blocks above that, you're going to have one more row of normal pistons facing down. This was because on closing, this layer here will get pushed up to the ceiling, and so this entire stack gets pushed up one block. So now we can start with our input, which is going to be from this piston two blocks over and one block up. You'll have a stone button as your input. And from there we're gonna have just a redstone dust and a repeater, which will power our top pistons. So uh, just like that. So dust here, repeater here. Going into this U shape, two dust here, this will power the top row of pistons, like that. Actually, we have to tear that up right now because right here is where our dropper loop is. So you're going to have two droppers here and a dropper here with hoppers right there and there. And right now we're just going to test if which version of the top will need because there's two versions depending on location. So you're going to put an item into this first dropper here and just power the repeater. And you want to see if this item here goes into this dropper or back into here. In this case it went to this one. So we're going to have a slightly different top. I'll show you how to build the other one at the timestamp given now. So for this version, we're going to have four hoppers going across like that into a block here and a comparator right here. Actually, we're going to do our minecart right now. You're going to need a fence to do this. So it has to be a minecart chest, that's important. And then push it into the rail, like that. And just drop it down right here, then use pistons right here to push these two blocks back into place. Just like that. And so now this minecart will get the item from this hopper and put it down to this hopper instead. So now from here we're going to make a monostable using a piston and torch. So we're going to have our piston right here with a redstone block on it. 
in the rail here, which will update this piston from this block. So when we press this, it'll, the redstone block will extend briefly, then be returned or we'll retract briefly, then extend again, give us, giving us a pulse from here, which we're then going to use to power this top line for a quad, and go down, and actually this, I think this one needs to be a slab right here. Down like that, and then into a, a four tick repeater to power this lower line here. Like that, so you're gonna have three rows of dust. First one being powered from this repeater, then second one from this repeater, then the four tick repeater here. Then we're gonna have a burnout on the top. We'll have a redstone here, and then a repeater going into this line. Then a block here. It's really powered by a comparator reading the output from a furnace. Let's put one one item in there. And that's actually the majority of our quad circuit. So I can I'll build a version here just to show what it's doing. So what happens here is when we power this, I would need an updater piston. See so don't make forget to place a piston right here. So when we power this, and I've got a repeater here. So when this is powered, you see it put spits out this piston at this level, which is the correct height to fully extend and push down all these blocks into the floor. When we power it again, it will retract them up to here, where we only need two more pulses to like that to fully retract the quad. If you notice, when I put it down, there's an extra pulse, four tick pulse heat, and the pistons are here, which we actually use to push, to push in the redstone blocks from the side at the exact right timing. And then they'll get pushed down, powering the pistons at this level, which will allow the quad to fully extend. So now what we have to do is get this dropper loop working and get the last pulses to work. And so to do that, we're actually going to build a separate dropper loop here. So you're going to have a dropper facing up here, then two right here, and hoppers connecting it from like that, and like that. This can actually just be a dropper facing down, because it just needs the hopper to pull the item out. Then from here you're going to have three repeaters on four ticks each, going into a block with a dust here, which will power this dropper. And now, right here we're going to have two one tick repeaters, which will power this dropper here and send the item into this hopper chain, which will activate this comparator. Actually, make sure to put an item in there. Then we'll have, this is actually on a hopper dropper here, um, comparator facing out, which will go into this block here, which will power this piston, extending it and activating this burnout here, which will send two pulses into this repeater here and fully retract the quad. Then from this hopper dropper, a single item in it, which goes into a piston here, and this will update this top row. Nothing in. So, you just reset it. Um, see if we'll fully extend minus the last block. It'll fully retract just like that. Okay, so now we're going to build the side redstone block double extenders. So we're going to first start by building a toggle right here. So this piston will push down and pull in this piston, making sure it only um, extends down when we need it. 
And to extend this piston, we're going to have a repeater going into block here with a piston here to update it. And so this will only update when this redstone block is retracted when it powers this. So this piston won't be butted out, so it will be able to um, update this piston here. You have, I think it's, it's three normal blocks going into redstone block, normal block, redstone block, and the normal block. The piston below that. So, and then we can just build our double extenders. So just like that, two double extenders at ceiling level with redstone blocks on them. And so to power this first one, I'm going to take an output from this redstone block, going into a torch tower right there. And this will this torch will power the piston at when it's at this location here. And a two tick repeater which will power this piston back here. And so that will I just extend this. That will allow it to fully extend. And then on retraction they get the last pulse for that. You have a hopper dropper right here, which will power which will activate this computer and power this dust. If I push that back up, it'll fully retract just like that. So now to power the extender on the other side, what we're going to need, we're going to have a redstone line that goes across, allowing us to get our pulse there. So this line is also used for the piston worm on closing. But since on closing we're only giving one tick pulses to it, it won't be able to activate this torch here, which powers the double extender. So we're going to have that torch going into a redstone dust, a block, a torch, and then another block. And now I'll go into a two tick repeater power in this piston here. Then attach that, you're going to have a torch which will go down into another redstone dust here. And I'll go up into another torch which will power this block. No, that will cause both of the double extenders to extend at the right time. So now to retract the redstone blocks and end this pulse, we're going to have a piston here which is powered by this repeater and updated by this piston. The double extender it has a redstone block on it. This will go down and power a four tick repeater. Going down into a dust here, which will go into a three tick repeater. And will go into this block and the dust here which will power this piston and push it back up. So if we test it right now, the entire extension should work. And of course I messed up the toggle here, so make sure that this piston is right here and not out here. But activate it now. Let's see it. Yeah. So now you see it fully retracts. And there's a bit of lag because I'm recording on a server right now. Yeah, so just like that. So now to get the bottom to work, we're going to first build tiny hopper circuit here just to get enough delay because it does take some time to retract. We have a comparator here and make sure to put three items into this hopper here. Let's go into a three tick repeater. So we'll go down into a cauldron. And on this server they get automatically filled, but you're going to have to fill it with water. So that will go into a comparator's air and a redstone dust here. We're going to have a toggle right here. So we have a dropper here, a dropper here, and a dropper here, like that. And then a hopper right there. We're going to get an output from the computer here. It's going to put a 
one item down here. I'm going to need a piston right there to update this dropper. So now, from this comparator here, we're going to build a falling edge. So, I'm going to get a piston with a redstone block on it. With repeated, I'll get an output from the redstone block when it's retracted. Going into a dust here and a block here, which will cause this piston to spit out its block again. I'm going to have a piston here to update the bottom row. Because, let's have a redstone here, which will go into this piston, two blocks, and then I'm going to first block off row of blocks there so these pistons can extend, because we're going to have four redstone blocks to power the bottom. And so this piston here will update these pistons, causing them to realize they're powered and have them extend. And then we're going to have this piston here push them over, which will briefly depower the bottom row. So the um, sticky pistons on the top can grab them and have the worm push itself all the way up. So you can remove the blocks up there now. Actually, I'll just put them back right here because we're going to have a burnout right here and I want them to get updated. Let's put them back like that. So this burnout will be updated by this pusher here. And then this dust here will power this piston and push it back. It's important that's like this and you can't have the piston right here. And you can't have the piston right here because you won't have the enough um block event delay or whatever it's called to get it to work properly. So then from there you're gonna have it go up like that to power the second row. Then we're going to have a s two slabs here which will allow it to power this top row up here. And we're going to have one more slab right here to make in order to update the pistons so they can so the entire single works. And they can put the worm back to how it was before and remove these blocks. And now if I test it, so you need to power it once. There's, or you have to power it twice because there's a toggle, so the first time it won't do anything, and the second time it'll update these pistons here and cause the entire thing to um, go up. So now the door should fully work, so you can see. So, opening works completely fine, and the closing extend the quad again, and then opening should work completely fine as well. So yep, that's the door. So if you had the version which, when powering this repeater here, the item in this dropper only went from this one here to this one here, and didn't go all the way to this dropper here, what you're going to want to do is replace this hopper up here with a dropper and put a second item into it. So now you have two items in a loop. You're also going to want to set this repeater here to three ticks. So now this door should work completely fine. It's completely the same as the other one built in the other location.